Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. I've already got my crank cleaned up and I've got it in our little stand here. Now, you don't need a stand like this uh, to do it at home. We use this stand because we assemble a lot of cranks here and it makes it a little bit easier in a production line type setup. But uh, get a friend to help you hold the crank on the table and you won't need any kind of a special fixture. I've got my uh, main bearing on, my front main. You'll notice that the uh, little index hole for the uh, dowel pin is towards the crank like we want. I'm gonna put my woodroof key in which goes in this slot here. Presses in fairly easy, but I'm gonna give it just a couple of taps with our drift and our hammer here just to make sure that it's good and seated. Now we're ready for our gear. I'm gonna grab my gloves and I'm gonna go over to the oven and get my gear and we'll be right back and slide it on there. All right, here's my gear out of the oven. I've got my timing marks in the front, my large chamfer in the back. I'm gonna line up my keyway if I can, and it slides right on. Perfect. Now once that cools, that gear will be locked on there uh, with, uh, with the interference fit. Once our gear is on, our next step is to put on our snap ring. In order to put the snap ring on, we use a pair of pliers like this. There's an expanding pliers, so when you squeeze the handle, it expands out and spreads the snap ring so that it goes on the crank. Here's our snap ring, and we'll go ahead and put it on. Get our pliers in there, spread it enough to slide it over the nose of the crank. You gotta remember that that gear is hot, so you don't wanna get too close to it with your bare fingers. It takes a little bit of a trick to get that popped over there. Sometimes it goes easy, sometimes it doesn't. a little bit along with the drift and our snap ring is on. Now that our snap ring is on, our next process will be to assemble the rest of the parts and we'll get our hub out of the oven and put that on. Now that we've got our snap ring installed and our gear installed, I've installed this front bearing on here. You notice again, I oriented it with the uh, little re recess for the dowel pin towards the crank. We have to put our slinger ring on that just slides right on like that and goes up against that shoulder. Here's our woodruff key, which drops right in. Again, we'll give it one little tap just to make sure it's properly seated. And we're all set for our hub. I'm going to go over to the oven now and grab the hub and we'll get her on there. All right, here's our hub out of the oven. We'll align our, our keyway. Slides right on. I want to go ahead and get our bolt in there right away get it started and we'll grab our impact wrench and hammer it till it quits turning and now we're going to let this cool and once that normalizes then we'll remove that bolt we'll put some Loctite on it and we'll go ahead and torque it to the proper torque but for now our crank assembly is ready to move to the next step 